We've been going in quite the wrong direction for the last two or three years. Transforming community <coughs> services was a total disaster when it comes to integration. <laughs> uh, I think the pilots, the integrated pilots, were very un unambitious. And we've been moving rapidly uh, uh, along a secondary care focus. Unless we can actually get a focus on primary care and maybe a little money into it, a lot of this is extremely abstract. I do think uh, the policy of clinical commissioning groups is, is the way to do this. And I would uh, guard against too many edicts on CCGs. Uh, last week it was about them having to innovate. This week it's about them having to integrate. Next week it's about, about them doing the waltz standing on their heads. And I would suggest not too much of that because that's precisely what they're there to do. You know, we do need innovation. We do need to do things differently. That's going to come in many different ways. Um, all of us on the panel believe that integration will deliver part of it. Some of the innovation from new providers through competitively tendered things will provide some of it. And we're going to have to be very, very flexible in the approaches that we take to harvest the best of those in difficult circumstances. The mandate between the Secretary of State and the Commissioning Board could be a very important lever. We think uh, there is a strong argument for having a specific, clear and measurable goal, uh, not a target, a goal, around integrated care that would be the equivalent of 18 weeks for integrated care. Surely what integrated care means is making a difference for you know, Mrs Smith, Mrs Ackroyd or whoever our uh, exemplar uh, patient uh, should be. And maybe what we should do is put some of these things in the NHS constitution. Patients don't know what's a good service or a bad service or what they've got on offer at the moment. But as we can mobilise patients to take more control and make more decisions about where they go for the care, then they'll start to be asking questions as well. If there is an issue here about renegotiating the GP contract, you keep with the existing contract and you say, as well as that, for those who wish to, this is entirely voluntary, there is another offer here. The contract that would incentivise a wider range of care to be delivered in primary care with the emphasis on integration, with the emphasis on quality. Uh, my worry is less about the CCGs who want to move forward, but in some areas clusters holding them back, uh, and in other areas the CCGs for some reason waiting for the rules or the permission to move forward. People just need to get on with this and do it. And if we don't grasp this now, uh, I think we'll end up with a centralised micromanaged system which is even more fragmented than we've got. There is something about hearing about what's happening in a more constructive way. It's about building a movement. Because the communication on change around the health bill, uh, the communication on change about innovation and integration is woefully poor. Yeah. I think um, that this whole issue of co-design fits in very closely to self-care, fits into co-production and it's the bit we've missed. But we haven't gone outside the consulting room and then done the same in our practices, our hospitals, our communities gen more generally. The only way this will be long-term sustainable is with the patients, the public, local citizens owning it. Now you think those GPs in here who think they've got patient participation groups like ours um, how effectively patients really get engaged in the provision and design even in a practice and then you think how it works in most hospitals and most PCTs at the moment. I think there are several winds blowing in the right direction. The internet is one of them. Holding your own record is another thing. The maternity record, the child health record illustrate that people don't lose them, that they're interested in them, they know what's in them. For commissioning that we're doing around long-term conditions, we are seeing self-management support as an integral part of what we have to buy. There's a lot going on. It's not necessarily happening fast enough. But if we start having these kind of global incentives for better care and more efficient care, the evidence is there that if you draw on the resources that are available well, you can deliver care more efficiently. The next major issue I think that we haven't really bottomed out is the L word, the leadership, it's the relationships. That's what gets rid of the them and us, and there's plenty of them and us around. If we're going to transform services, huge amounts of what you need to do are build the relationships. One of the things we've observed is the very bitter legacies that can be left between GPs and specialists from some of the practice-based commissioning initiatives. You really have to work out where the relationships between generalists and specialists are going to work best. So ladies and gentlemen, can we just have a thank you for the panel and then I'm going to hand over to Chris to sum up. <laughs>